what is up guys welcome back to a brand new brawl stars video now today we are going to be talking about something that i've seen discussed somewhat in the community but not really outlined as a whole and that is going to be just totally revamping progression and adding in a league system making it so there's not only progression based on making your account maxed out but progression based on being competitive and getting towards a sort of pro level end game let's go ahead and get right into it All right, guys, so first and foremost, and just so you guys know, I'm going to be looking off to the side periodically because I do have a full bullet pointed list of everything I wanted to talk about in this video. So first and foremost, I wanted to talk about early game because I feel like the tutorial and just early game in general needs a little bit of a revamp here. Um, obviously, we're trying to sort of cater to new players, okay? We're trying to make sure that everything's friendly to someone that doesn't understand really what's going on and what they're seeing and everything and doesn't get overwhelmed by it and just want to put the game down and delete it and not even think about it again, you know? You want people to see it and be like, hey, this is doable. I can play this game. I could probably get good at it if I put in the time to get good at it. So first and foremost, we're going to make the game now start out giving you three brawlers. Now, you're going to be getting Shelly, Dynamite, and Colt, and I chose them specifically because they're relatively easy to understand in general. There's not a whole lot of crazy stuff that goes on as far as their skill ceilings are concerned. I mean, Shelly is very easy to play, obviously. Dynamite a little bit less so because of his mechanics and everything, but, you know, as Barley is a rare right now, I figured we'd choose the other lobber that's a common, uh, because, you know, that'd be a little bit less valuable. But if, if given the option, I would rather have Barley given to early game players. But I just sort of am choosing based on what they already have listed as rarities. So, Dynamite in general, I feel like is going to be the harder one out of these three to understand. And then we also have Colt. And uh, they're just relatively easy to play. You know, Colt, he just shoots and then he can shoot through things with his super and he does a lot of damage. Shelly, up close and personal, does a lot of damage. You know, obviously her star power is really solid as well and makes it even easier to, to continue to do more damage. And then Dynamite, you know, he just does a ton of damage as well. So overall, they're crazy DPS brawlers that have sort of different ranges. And that's really what, what it comes down to is that their ability to shoot in certain places is different. And the damage output as a result will also be different. And I feel like it's important to have a close range brawler, a long range brawler, and a lobber that you're going to have access to to sort of establish this. That there are going to be different archetypes of brawlers in this game. They can all output a lot of damage, or maybe not all of them, but you know, most of them can output a lot of damage unless they have sort of a more support role on the team. But, you know, at the expenses sometimes of, you know, range or just general ability to shoot in certain ways. So that's that's probably going to be a better way if they add those to the tutorial and um, make it so it's a little bit easier to understand the different archetypes of brawlers right off the bat. I think that that's going to be a, a, a long way towards, you know, getting early game players that are maybe a little overwhelmed with the crazy amount of things happening on the screen to stick around and sort of uh, reel them in and, and get them ready to play the game a little bit more, okay? So that's just early game, okay? I'm talking about like tutorial type stuff. Now, I think, and I know I'm gonna get some flack for this because a lot of you guys don't like the upgrade system as it is, but I think it's actually pretty decent. If you look towards just Clash Royale as an example, no one really has that many issues with the upgrade system unless they have, you know, end game competitive as something that's in their sights and they wanna accomplish eventually. And obviously then, you know, you're going to either have to be really, really good at the game and win a whole bunch of grand tournaments, or you're going to have to go ahead and uh, just shell out tons and tons of cash to actually max out your account. And that's thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. So I think as it is, I don't really have very many issues with it because obviously, you know, in Clash Royale, the money that they make is going to be a lot of times from opening chests and then... In Brawl Stars, I feel like it's probably eventually going to be in skins and cosmetics of some kind. You know, I feel like we're going to get a lot of cosmetics in the future, whether that be like really, really freaking cool cosmetics where, you know, it costs a whole bunch to get the skins or whatever, or it's just, you know, normal skins for each brawler that sort of changes their color palette. So overall, I do think that that's going to change their monetization a little bit. And as it stands right now, I think that their upgrade system is totally fine. I think it's going to work well especially when they start dropping a bunch of new brawlers and we, you know, really get into the thick of this game. So, 
Next up, we have the major, major changes to talk about. A true progression system, guys. A true progression system. Not just in upgrades, which is, you know, what it is right now, really. Because trophies are kind of meaningless if you get down to it. Um, a true progression system, but working towards an end game. Now, what I mean by that is you start out, you're learning the brawlers, you're new to the game, maybe, or maybe you've just gotten a new brawler and you want to try them out and everything. You have the auto-aim button, okay? You have the all-important auto-aim button that's going to keep retention up and make it so the player understands what's going on at all times. And, uh, you know, they have an option, even if they have no idea what they're doing, they can just smash the auto-aim button and win the game, right? So, if you really want to keep that in, Supercell, if you really do, if that's something that you don't plan on taking out, but maybe you'll nerf it, but you're still going to keep it in the game, I would reckon that, you know, someone at around 150 trophies on each brawler will have a decent understanding of, you know, the brawler that they're playing, and that it'd be relatively safe to sort of take away the auto-aim option, you know, and just make it so you have just the joysticks or tap to shoot, I guess, depending on you know, what we actually see them uh, want to do as far as new controls or improved controls are concerned. You know, this is not something that's sort of set in stone at this point, so we can't really say without a shadow of a doubt that uh, they are going to be improving on it or changing it or anything like that. So just operating on the knowledge that I have right now, uh, we're going to say that we're going to take away the auto-aim system completely when your brawler gets to 150 trophies. Now, you get a new brawler, a new one just came out, and you have zero trophies on them, then it's going to pop back in on that brawler, okay? So you're not going to have it on brawlers that are over 150 trophies. It will be taken away and individualized to the progression of every single brawler. Now, then, I feel like that, I feel like that pretty well accomplishes uh, the, the sort of issues that were arising from not having auto-aim and just having the control scheme being what it was before this latest update. I feel like... Making it so, you know, it's there at the beginning with the new players trying to get get a grasp on the game and get a grasp on positioning and everything like that. And then you take it away when they get towards, you know, having an understanding of how the game works. I don't feel like that's too confusing. I honestly don't. And I would be eager to hear your guys' thoughts on that topic in particular because I do think that it is beneficial to have auto-aim in the game, but not at an end game level. That is my issue. And then I have a proposition that we're going to talk about in a little bit that sort of goes hand in hand with this concept of sort of having it in for the start of the game and then taking it away eventually. So getting towards the 300 trophy mark on every single brawler, you are going to be able to use it once you hit 300 trophies on them. You're going to be able to use them in a league system. Okay, now I'm going to sort of outline this whole league system right now, but basically the gist of it is that it's going to be the competitive end game that you're working towards getting to on every single brawler and that you want to overall have as high as possible on your account. And it will be account based, not based on your brawler. That way, you know, you're going to unlock each brawler once you get to 300 trophies on them in the competitive game mode where you're going towards that end game for, okay? Otherwise, you're not going to really necessarily need to worry about trophies. It's going to be something that's individualized. Uh, first, you remove auto-aim, then you're able to play them in the league system in competitive and uh, work towards the pro level. So basically what I've outlined here, and uh, the graphics here might be changed because, you know, I am going ahead. So just, just look at the graphics here, okay, guys? Because I'm going to make some graphics for this in a, in a, in a future uh, work session, I guess. Because right now I'm just recording this without knowing exactly what I'm going to do as far as the graphics are concerned. So uh, basically, just look at the graphics here. Essentially, this is going to be the league system as a whole. And you're going to start out in sort of a bronze, you know, low level where everyone starts out. And you just work your way up through the muck and all that. You can queue up with your friends. You can queue up, you know, with random strangers or whatever you feel like doing. But you're going to be queuing up in each game mode and have an individual score for each game mode that's considered a competitive game mode. Now, whatever they want to go ahead and consider competitive, that's up to them. Obviously, you know, Boss Rush and uh, Robo Rumble are not necessarily going to be lending themselves to being competitive game modes. But if they want to do, you know, Smash and Grab and Heist and Bounty and Showdown or just, you know, team game modes. So it'd be just, you know, Smash and Grab and Heist and Bounty and, and Brawl Ball. Um, that's up to them, obviously. I'm, I'm just saying, like, 
in general, that's what I'm thinking is that there'd be like individual values, individual ELOs, scores, tiers, whatever you want to call them uh, for each game mode. And you could sort of combine this into one overall score, but then you could end up playing with people that have no idea what they're doing at a high level in, you know, Brawl Ball, for example, because they're stupidly good at smash and grab. Okay, and they got to a super high level in just smash and grab and then hopped on over to Brawl Ball and they have no idea what they're doing. That's a pretty big issue, I think. Making it so, you know, people are perceived to be very good at the game, but they're not necessarily that good at the game. Maybe you have to sort of individualize the score for each one and put them on the profiles of the players. So I, I do think that I sort of understand their issues there for making a league system because how are they going to handle it? It can't really be combined, but at the same time, it might be kind of confusing if it isn't. So I understand the issues they're having. However, if they have an individual system, individual ranking, ELO, whatever you want to call it, uh, for each type of competitive game mode, each type of competitive queue, that will allow you to queue up in whatever competitive mode you want to be queued up in and go up against people at an equal skill level to you. Or, you know, if you're really, really good, but you're stuck in a lower bracket, then obviously you'll just push really, really quickly up the ranks. So... This is going to start out again in a, in a low bronze type tier where everyone's going to start out. And then you're going to work towards a high level queue called the pro queue. Now, the pro queue is not just going to be something that you necessarily want to get into for, you know, just being the, the highest level. Just having the accolade of it, you know, maybe you get like a, a really cool uh, skin or maybe you get a really cool player icon or something like that some way that indicates to everyone else that you're really good at the game that you're a pro level player you know that's something that you can work towards but not just that okay not just that this will be a very unique thing actually that brawl stars uniquely is able go able to be a they're able to actually do this if i can get the words out please so they're, this is a very unique opportunity that they're going to have because not a lot of games are going to have the functionalities present, especially mobile games. Well, I mean, let alone mobile games to be able to do this sort of thing, especially on a quarterly update schedule. So if you think about it, OK, guys, if they're adhering to a quarterly update schedule in the future, wouldn't it be awesome if there was a tournament hosted by Supercell or hosted by, you know, unofficially or officially by Supercell, but like community members were going ahead and commentating it and stuff. Wouldn't it be fantastic if there was a tournament hosted by them that included teams of all kinds of pro level players, pro Q players that are, you know, the highest level players in the game that people could work towards and sort of eventually be a part of, you know? And then during those tournaments, they'd be like a big event, right? So there'd be a quarterly thing happening every three months or so uh, to adhere to their update schedule. So they're also able to demo new brawlers, new game modes, new features, all of those sorts of things, new maps, new terrains, you know, anything like that. They can demo all of those things in the tournament during the live stream that they'll be putting on for it, right? Now, this is a huge thing to, to commit to, obviously, and I don't think that that sort of thing's going to happen. However, I do think that, you know, there could be some some kind of tournament hosted by Supercell on a regular basis to adhere to their update schedule that would allow them to do that sort of thing. I like Brawl Talks as they are, but how awesome would it be if you and, you know, 150, 250, a million, whatever, how many thousand... However many thousand people, you know, would be watching the stream and uh, then all of a sudden, you know, you're all talking in chat, you're all freaking out about, you know, so-and-so pro team just beat out the other pro team. Wow, that's so cool. And then all of a sudden, bam, silhouette pops up on the screen and then you get some gameplay of a new brawler no one's seen before playing off to the side and everything. Like everyone's freaking out about it. Chat's going insane. Can't you, can't you imagine that? Wouldn't that be awesome? Anyways, that's my idea as far as putting on a production to adhere to the schedule for updates that they've already determined. Now, again, they're, they're not necessarily established to always go towards the quarterly update schedule, but it's something they try to do. So it could obviously be delayed or moved up based on, you know, whenever they plan on actually getting the update out. I just think that that would be a fantastic way to uh, drive up a lot of community engagement. You know, make it so there is a competitive pool of players that are working hard to try to be the best at the game. And it's important to establish that as a possibility. Obviously, you know, a lot of you guys, if not all of you guys, know the game League of Legends. Okay, whether you like it, whether you hate it, you know what the game is. 
and you know that it's a very popular game, was a very popular game, remains to this day to be a very popular game. Well, think back to, uh, and, and this can apply, this logic can apply to pretty much any game that has a competitive community behind it and a pro scene of some kind. Think back to playing a game like that, playing a game like League of Legends. You watch the pro scene, you watch the high tier players, everyone that's super good at the game, and you're like, wow, like I could do that someday, dude. I could get really good at this game. I could be a pro and then we could we could we could we could be on a team and we could go to tournaments and it would be awesome. Like that that level of engagement is not something that you're going to find with non-competitive games, non-esports games. It's something that's just very unique to to games that have these levels of tournaments where there's huge prize pools and huge tournaments that have tons of players and tons of, you know, professional esports teams and all that. Um, it's a very unique thing where, you know, the, the new player sees these end game players, these pro players, the best of the best, and they aspire to, to be that, you know, it's, it started out with like normal sports and everything and then moved into esports because it, the same aspiration and admiration came out of esports that came out of sports initially, right? So having that level of of interaction with your player base where you're you know encouraging everyone to jump in on it and spend as much time as they can you know honing their skills and getting good at the game in anticipation of possibly being a professional that's you know making a living off of it that's able to be on a professional esports team like that's a big thing that's a big draw and that keeps people playing past you know maybe even when they normally would otherwise in anticipation of it so why wouldn't you take advantage of that? This is a game where that is very, very possibly an attribute in retention and possibly the biggest attribute in player retention in general, because, you know, think about how hype those sorts of events would be if they put those on on a semi regular basis, quarterly, even even every other quarter. I'm talking twice a year, even once a year, if they had like a major tournament and did something uh, somewhat akin to the LCS that League of Legends has, right? If they did anything even remotely close to that, that had that level of, of high-tier gameplay and that could uh, engage the player base to have that level of admiration and aspiration to, you know, attaining that level of uh, being a pro, you know? If they could do that, and they can, they have the possibility, the foundation is there, they can do it then I think this game will be massively, massively, massively successful past pretty much every other mobile game that's ever been released, let alone, you know, the Supercell games themselves. I think it's going to exceed every expectation that everyone has for it. And that's this sort of thing is pretty much what I envisioned in the beginning when this game first came out. When I watched the first tournament, my mind was going, you know, it's, you know, the, the, the gears are spinning and everything. And, and I'm like, I'm thinking like, this could be huge if we see actual legit esports from it. And then with the latest update, I feel like they've kind of lost that. And I just felt like, you know, even if they don't even watch this video, if we can get enough people talking about this kind of thing where, you know, you, you're working towards being a professional in this game, then maybe it happens, you know? And if it doesn't, which it probably won't, it probably won't impact anything. This video is probably not going to do anything towards, you know, changing the game or changing anything Supercell thinks about the game or the potential that it has. I had to try, okay? I had to try because right now things are definitely not going in a very good direction and a lot of people are not very happy with uh, just how Supercell are treating the game in general, you know? And it's not necessarily bad, it's just different than what people were hoping and expecting you know hoping for and expecting i just i don't know man it's uh it's, it's an interesting topic to talk about but i feel like we're almost definitely going to be let down because many of these things just won't happen like i mentioned the tournament because i think that that's a really solid idea but i just don't think that that's going to happen i i have very little uh hope that they'll put on that sort of event and correlate, you know, update leaks or whatever to that. I, I just, I don't think that that's going to happen. I'd like it to happen. And that's why I talked about it though. So 
Anyways, if you guys have any ideas, any feedback, any criticism or anything you'd like to talk about, then drop me a comment below uh, because I really I've, I've put a lot of thought into how they could do a league system and there's a lot of ways that they could do it. But this is, in my opinion, the best way that I've seen and thought of um, as far as just implementing it and also retaining auto aim for early game retention because, again, you know, we're assuming that that is going to boost early game retention somewhat significantly. So just let me know your thoughts, guys. That's all I want to know. Uh, what do you think of this idea? Do you think it's even possible that they do any of the things I mentioned in this video? If you have certain things you like, certain things you don't, just let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, guys, that's going to be about it for this one. But yeah, guys, that's going to be about it for this one. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Hope you got something out of it. And I hope that I could just inject a little bit of hype back into the community because right now it's just it's it's just down dude it's it's so bad like this is easily the worst that brawl stars has been off uh since release like since the day it was released on the app store this is brawl stars worst day and every day moving forward without a nerf to auto aim or a change or acknowledgement within uh just the community as a whole on reddit and everything like that from supercell is a worse day so i'm hoping that you know us as content creators we can sort of just rein it in and rein in the expectations and maybe we just maybe can possibly put out some cool stuff that supercell takes into account when they're designing new features so that's it for this one until the next one guys peace